Hey guys, my name's Ryan. This is my newest project I just built. This is the ultimate electric beach cart. I'm gonna show you a few test runs that I can go over how I built this thing. So here's my cart. I want to give a quick shout out to two YouTubers. I'm going to put their names in the description. They're the ones that inspired me to build the electric beach cart. And then another one inspired me to use a old Razor Jerk Quad ATV for the electrical components and the framing. So like I said, both their names are going to be down in the description. I'm going to ramble on and kind of talk about how I built the cart and what you need to purchase where you can make your own electric beach cart. So for the framing itself, I bought it from Gorilla Carts. I got it on Amazon, on Amazon Prime Day for like $110, so it was pretty cheap. Just be on the lookout, see if you can get it cheap. You can look at your local hardware stores. I know they sell Gorilla Carts um, at your local hardware stores too. Then we got the Razor Dirt Quad ATV. I bought that off Facebook Marketplace used for $180. Originally, these ATVs go for like seven, dollars $800, so you definitely want to buy them used. So just be, be aware, if you're going to buy it online used, um, you know, make sure it's in good quality condition. A lot of people let them sit out. They modify them as well. So the one I got, it was like modified. It was rusted. It was used. I had to do a lot of extra work. I had to unmodify this Razor Dirt Quad ATV and then get all the rust off all the bolts and everything, which is very, in, you know, poor quality condition. But here we are. I made the cart, right? All right. So talking more about the cart, I want to show you the big balloon wheels. So I do have... Um, some big balloon beach tires here. I highly recommend them. They just glide so smooth across the sand like it's nothing. So if we look at the front, I'll show you how I attach it to the front. So this is the original Gorilla Cart framing. And what I did is the original tires, if you could see this pin right here, the tires will fit here, here in between that pin. But I added some aluminum rod tubing right here that's hollow. And I extended the little axle here for I could fit my beach tires on. I put the pin back and then I put one of these lynch pins here as well. So I could take the tires on and off. And that's how I did it on the other side too. If you're not going to make an electric beach cart, you can actually just, you know, if you want to add these balloon tires to your cart, you could just do the same setup in the back. And then you could have big balloon tires on a gorilla cart. But if we look at the back... Here's the cart itself, and this is the Razor Dirt Quad setup. And this is the axle, and this is the flange right here. So I needed to atta attach the tires to the axle itself. So what I did is I added some threaded rod. I just bought some very long threaded rod and cut it myself. And then I attached it here like that. Then I put on some lock nut, um, some lock tightening nut bolts here for, you know, when it's spinning, these bolts will just come off. So this works perfectly. So when the tires rotate, so does the axle. So they're not freely rotating, you know, with the axle. If we come over here, I'll kind of show you the on off power switch and the other switches as well. So this is how you turn the cart on and off. Pretty self-explanatory on and off. And then over here, another switch I have. Here's my forward and reverse switch. So right now it's on forward. If I flip it, it's on neutral. Neutral doesn't do anything, but if I flip it again, it's on reverse. So that's how I could go for neutral reverse. I think that the switch is optional. I think it's important to have if you have a very tight shed or garage where you can only bring the cart in one way and you can't like do a full turn to bring it out. That's when I would put the switch on.
I am also making YouTube videos, so check the description on how I made my Ford Reverse Switch for you guys can make it yourself. The original Razor Dirt Quad ATV does not come with a Ford Reverse Switch. So if I come over here, I made a little steel panel here because I didn't know where I want to put the charger. And this, um, I'll explain this too. But he here's the charger. You take that cap off, and that's how you charge your, um, you know, the beach cart now. The cap's on there just to protect it from the sand. And then down here is the battery capacity and voltage. So this kind of just tells me how much battery I have in here. So if I click it, we are on 73%. Then if I click it again, it shows the voltage. We're at uh, 24.8. And this is nice. This will turn off in 10 seconds of me not, you know, touching it or anything. But at first, I didn't know if I just want to screw, you know, the battery thing to here and put the voltage here. So that's why I added the steel plate. You don't necessarily have to add the steel plate, but, you know, it's on there. It's nice and sturdy. And how I did it is just used a, if you could see right here, I attached a corner bracket right down here. So very nice and sturdy. It's not wobbly at all. It's nice steel. And I just, you know, cut out the template of the steel itself. So let's go over how I have the batteries and how I made the battery holders. So if I come on this side, this is how I made the battery holders. So this is the original Razor Dirt Quad frame. And what I did is I used angle iron. And I didn't use any welding for this at all. I just, you know, attached it with some screws. So here's the angle iron, and that's how the batteries fit in right here. So with the batteries, uh, I do have two batteries right here. They're both 12 volts. Next year, I'm going to buy two big batteries. One's going to be this size. The other's going to be, you know, the same size, and it's going to fit on both sides for I can have a longer battery runtime. So I think that's going to be very beneficial for the cart itself. I do want to mention real fast... With the battery capacity and voltage, um, I did connect the wires with alligator clips. So when I do switch the batteries, you know, I could just take them off real fast and then throw that back on the alligator clips. So that's really nice for this part right there. If we look at the electrical wiring, this is all I did for the electrical wiring. I know it looks like there's a lot going on, but once you really understand it, it's not that bad. So the electrical wiring, I put the controller in an electrical box. I bought this box for like nine, ten dollars at like my local hardware store. And I just did it just to keep it, you know, away from sand and keep everything organized. So how I added that on, I don't know if this is a good view, but I added some screws right here, some bolts into the box itself. And then down here I used um like a U bolt. It's like a metal plating. And I bought this at my local hardware store again. You can see the, the metal plating. That's how I attach the control box, the electrical box to the framing. So it's nice because it's not welded on. You can weld it on yourself, but, you know, I can move it if I ever wanted to. I could put it in a different location. So if I talk about now the framing of the dirt quad, let me go on this other side. So here here's the dirt quad. This is the framing I was telling you about. And I, I welded it on here. So this is a steel bar, a one inch thick steel bar. And this was not here with the original um, Razor Dirt Quad. I added this in because when I attached this, this bar is very thin. And I wasn't really confident how strong it's going to hold up all that weight for all this equipment down here. Compared to this bar, it's, you know, it's an inch right here. And this is like half an inch, right? Very thin. So that's why I added the steel bar, just to give it more support up here for this bar doesn't collapse or anything. But I had someone do some welding for me, and then, you know, he, he welded the bar up here. Then he welded the bar right here as well. I kept the handle of the um, ATV on because I added this little plate here. Then I added these screws on too, just to add some extra support to the welds for, you know, it's holding the handle up. And then over here, I want to talk about the sprockets next. So originally, the Razor Dirt Quad, it has a 15 tooth sprocket up here and then 47 tooth sprocket back here, which is too fast. Um, the Razor Dirt Quad goes like 8 miles an hour. So if you're in front of this cart and you're pulling for your electric beach cart, that is way too fast. So what I did is I changed the sprocket sizing on electricscooterparts.com. Scooter, the company is very helpful. If you have any questions, definitely ask them. But I change it from a 9-2 sprocket up here and then 
the driven down here, it is a 36 two sprocket. So what that does is it's gonna slow the speed down to around four miles per hour, but it's gonna add a lot of torque. And that's what you need for the sand to you know glide faster on the sand and glide better on the sand. So it's a lot more, a lot, a lot better to change the sprockets. I highly recommend it change the sprockets. And then this is just the uh, chain cover. It came with the dirt quad. It's nice, protects her from the sand. Chain, uh, sand does again the chain. Here's the brake setup. I just took off the brake system. I didn't really think I needed the brakes for my, my beach cart. You know, I'm not going to do anything crazy with it. So kind of just thought it was in the way. Just a lot of extra stuff I don't need, right? So if I come up here and look at the handle now. So I added this guy on. This is just a thumb throttle. And I had to cut the bar to put the thumb throttle on. I wasn't able to find a thumb throttle that has like a um, like a C-clamp on it where you could just, you know, clamp it on and screw it on. But all the ones I found that were compatible with the pin wires, I had to cut it off. So that's what I had to do, sadly. I would like a, I would lo love to keep the, you know, framing intact, but I had to cut it to put this on. Honestly, not a big deal. It's still really sturdy. But what you do is just go down and up, and that's how the cart will move when it's on. The extension of the cord, though, you did have to... You know, extend the wires so it reaches all the way to the controller. So what I did, the original Razor Dirt Quad, it had a thumb, th uh, thumb throttle, not a thumb throttle, a twist throttle. When you twist it, what I did is that twist part. I cut the wires off and I attach it to the pins. I attach it to uh, the pins with a pin connector. So here's the original wire, and it goes all the way over there. Really easy to do. Uh, look in my description. I'm going to add some pin connector pits. Uh, pin connector um some pin connectors down in the description so look at the pin connectors and you want to buy those so buy the pin connectors you could just extend the wire like that and then it's nice because you can always unclip it or you could just solder the extension wire again pretty easy if you're not used to soldering just do the pin connectors and just connect them that way super easy so i think that's about everything right here that's the this is the wiring for my that's the wiring for my forward and reverse switch. Again, it's optional, but if you want to do it, it's nice to have in the cart. And then I just connect it that way. And again, I'm going to post a, I have a YouTube video on how to make this forward and reverse switch. So, you know, please check it out for, you can see how it works. There's one more thing I want to mention. Because of how big the balloon wheels are, they were rubbing against the cart. So I had to raise the cart. And what I did was added a coupling nut on the original Gorilla Cart axle. And then I pass a bolt going through it. I only had to do this to the front side as the original Razor ATV metal framing lifted the car in the back. But I think that's it. This is how I made my, how I made the ultimate, the ultimate on YouTube electric beach cart. I do want to say if I were to do anything differently, there is a few things I wish I could do differently. Um, these tires how big they are if you actually turn the tires they will hit right here which is a little flaw in the system i think it's fine it's enough turning radius where it's not like a huge deal for me right now but what i would do differently is the eraser framing it actually had a bar from here to here that would come out i would honestly put the batteries in the middle right in the middle of the cart and then from here to here, I would slice all this off. So you have another like six inches here, and you have another six inches on the other side for a turning radi radius, which I think would be very beneficial to do. So if I were to do anything differently, that's probably the number one thing I would do. It's just find a new location for the batteries and put them up here. Again, I think it's okay for now. I've not really had an issue. I just had to do wider turns when I, you know, turn the carter and everything, but just something I would do differently. And then a little other thing I would do. The on and off switch. I have it on the side right here which is fine. But I did this one uh, last. I would probably put the on and off switch like right up here too. Just for you could have all the controls. You know right at the front of the Razor Dirt Quad. Not Razor Dirt Quad but the electric beach cart. So here it is guys. I hope you guys were able to learn something off this. And you know hopefully you can make your own electric beach cart. But this was a super fun build to, to make. I highly recommend doing this. 
if, if you're new to like, I was new to a lot of electrical work and, you know, building stuff. So I learned a lot during this project and it was very fun, but 10 out of 10 would recommend this works phenomenal on the CN and it saves your back from pulling all your heavy equipment. So hope you guys enjoyed this video. If you have any comments, please leave them down below and uh, show me your electric beach cars if you guys end up making one.